recording in Pro Tools using Logic, Digital Performer, Cubase, Nuendo, Reason, or Ableton Live? Let us mix your project today. We will give your songs a sound that rivals today's hottest acts. Visit eneonicity.com for more details. Welcome to Lesson 8, where we're going to discuss file management. For Pro Tools, it is recommended that you put your audio on a separate drive than your startup drive. For the latest information on drive compatibility with Pro Tools, go to digidesign.com in the support section. So we'll go ahead and open up a file. And this is a common message that comes with Pro Tools if you've either moved the session or you haven't used the session in a while. Most often I just go ahead and ignore this because what's more important is what's coming up next. So go ahead and press no. And as you can see, all your audio files are intact. If it was missing any audio files, you would see grayed out areas where you see waveforms right now. Also note that all audio files in Pro Tools have their own unique IDs specific to Pro Tools. So even if you change the name of an audio file, Pro Tools will still be able to find it. Another window which is helpful is the project window, which you can also access by hitting option O. Here you can see the session file, and above it is all the audio files. If you click open that folder, you'll be able to audition individual parts. If you're in the project window and you hit that up arrow, that'll actually show you your drives. It'll show you the capacity of the drives and how much is free. Also, if you're trying to unmount a FireWire drive while Pro Tools is open, it generally will not work in the Finder. Highlight the drive, and then hit Unmount. There is also what's called Transfer Files. Transfer files come from either CD-ROMs or DVD-ROMs, and because of the playback speed necessary for Pro Tools to read audio, these kinds of drives are not fast enough. A good example of this is the demo session that comes with Pro Tools. So what you will have to do is load that disk into your audio drive and then open it from there. If you don't have an extra hard drive that's designated just for audio, Pro Tools still will record audio onto your startup disk. The most important thing that you can learn from any of these lessons is to back up your data. Always make sure you have a backup of your sessions. Even if you don't use a second drive dedicated to audio, I highly recommend getting a couple of FireWire drives maybe a few portables, maybe a couple desktops with high volume amounts on them, and always back up after every session. One way to do that is to go to File, Save a Copy In, and then pick a second drive. I'm using the latest session format. If you're going to be sharing the files with someone else, my recommendation is to save it as a Pro Tools 5.1 to 6.9 session. Also save it as either a BWF WAV or an AIFF. If we're going to be sharing the session with someone who has a Mac, go ahead and use SD2. For items to copy, go ahead and hit all audio files. And go ahead and enable the other three items on the right. Better to have more information than less. And then hit save. And what Pro Tools will do is copy all of that information onto the other drive. So now if we go to that Firelight drive and open up the folder, you can see that the session has been copied along with all of the waveforms. Next, I'm gonna show you how to save a session so that it can be opened up by other Pro Tools operators, either using the Mac or PC format. And we'll just put PC Mac at the end of the file name so we know that it's compatible with both formats. For the session format, I would recommend always doing Pro Tools 5.1 to 6.9 because there's a good possibility that the other user may not be using Pro Tools 7. For your audio wave file type, I would always hit Wave. Our sample rate is the same, 44.1. Our bit depth is 24. And our fader gain is 12. And here's where it's important. Right here, enforce Mac PC compatibility. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and check that. And then down here, items to copy all audio files. And go ahead and include the other three on the right. Then hit save. And next you'll see a message that shows all of the things that will not be included in the session because we're saving in a format of 6.9 or earlier. At this point, none of these things are important to us, so we're going to go ahead and hit yes. And if you'll notice, there's the old Pro Tools logo from versions 5.1 to 6.9. And once again, the most important thing you can take away from this lesson 
or any of the lessons is to always, always back up your data. This concludes Lesson 8.